Hi, my name is Jan Salzman. I'm a consultant knee surgeon from Germany as well as Switzerland. Today I'm going to present to you an AutoCAD case for a previously failed microfracture. The case is a 44-year-old female subject, not sporting really active occasional skiing. She had a previous microfracturing at a medial femoral condyle for a partial chondral lesion. She developed persistent pain during daily activity already one year after the operation. She presented to my outpatient clinic with a medial sided joint pain, a questionable varus deformity. She had swelling, low function, and a weak muscle status at that extremity. On normal x-ray, there were no specific findings, no signs of osteoarthritis or joint gap narrowing. But the long-standing x-ray showed a clear varus deformity with overloading of the medial compartment, which was quantified at four degrees of varus deformity, mostly coming from the tibia. The subsequent MRI showed a previously failed microfracture with a typical signs of insufficient cartilage repair plus intralesional osteophyte causing the constant pain of the subject as well as the swelling. Summary of that case, we had a previously failed microfracture with a typical intralesional painful osteophyte and a not addressed or not corrected four degrees tibial varus deformity resulting in an overloading of the medial compartment. We performed surgery in this subject. In initial atroscopy, after debridement of the lesion, we saw this typical intralesional osteophyte, which we had to trim down. Then we stabilized the defect edge and took cartilage from the defect edge. We particulated that and mixed it with autologous fluid and then performed the autocard procedure at the medial femoral condyle as in a way of a revision autocard procedure for a previously failed microfracturing. During full range of motion, full extension and flexion maneuvers, we saw very good stability of the product related to the autologous fibrin glue and we saw a good placement of the valgus producing tibial osteotomy using the peak power plate. The patient returned to sports and was very effective, but she had also still some clicking phenomena, and we performed a repeat MRI uh, nine months after the procedure, and we saw very good cartilage repair, very silent subchondral bone, but some hypertrophy of the transplant. At the same time, the osteotomy had healed very nicely. So we decided to perform a plate removal and at the same time a rescope where we saw a very good high quality cartilage repair, but with mild hypertrophy, which we trimmed down during the same atroscopy. And at the final result, we saw no impingement at the opposing meniscus as well as tibia, and the patient was absolutely pain-free. Under subsequent MRI, 12 months after the procedure, we saw very good cartilage repair at the medial condyle with no more hypertrophy. The rehabilitation in this subject was four weeks of partial weight bearing with free range of motion directly after the operation. The rehabilitation in this subject was only four weeks of partial weight bearing while we allowed the patient for free range of motion directly after the procedure. She commenced to full weight bearing after four weeks. She returned to biking and swimming eight weeks after the procedure. She was running already five months after the procedure and returned to playing tennis eight months after the procedure. And finally, she returned to skiing 12 months after the procedure. In summary, this was a successful revision autocard surgery. It was a one-stage combined approach to address the cartilage lesion as well as the virus deformity. In this case, we had a mild transplant hypertrophy, which might be related to initial overstuffing of the cartilage defect by the chips. But finally, we had a very good outcome after plate removal and trimming down of the transplant. 
the patient returned to skiing successfully and finally had a very good clinical outcome with a Lissholm score of 90 points and a final Mocard score of also 90 points. Thank you very much.